welcome to Return to Home with Michelle Broxton. Today, we're gonna to be seasoning, cleaning, and taking good care of our cast iron skillets, and dun, 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 we're gonna make an apple pumpkin crisp. Now, I'll tell you, when I first started trying to figure out how to make an apple and pumpkin crisp, it was a little bit challenging. I had to play and play and play with that recipe until I came up with just the right thing, and I think you're really going to love it. First, I can tell you, I just fried some chicken and made chicken gravy in this cast iron skillet. So I thought, well, I'll just show you how to clean it, season it, and take good care of it before we put an apple pumpkin crisp in here. The number one ingredient to cleaning your cast iron and taking good care of it is hot water. So we're gonna start with some hot water and get your cast iron nice and clean. Now you might say, am I supposed to use soap? No, we're not gonna use soap in our cast iron because cast iron does need a little bit of oil left over in it to keep it what's called seasoned. I'll go over the seasoning process with you once we get all of the cooking residue out of it and then we'll get it nice and dry. First, let's run some hot water. Let's get all of everything we just cooked out of it and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that our cast iron is clean and all of the food residue is out with the exception of some oil, we're going to move over to we're going to move over to the stove and get it nice and dry. Now, I will tell you, if you do need to scrub your cast iron, one thing that you can do is use just a little bit of kosher salt. For example, I use a device like this to scrub my cast iron. If you find that you need something a little more, just use a little bit of kosher salt, sprinkle it in your cast iron, and you can rub it around with your hand and it'll act like a scrubbing device that's very safe for your cast iron. Just make sure to rinse it completely out with very hot water before you put it on the stove. Once your cast iron skillet has been completely cleaned and there may be just a little bit of grease left but no food at all, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of your pan. Just like that, maybe just a cap full or so. And now I know a hundred years ago, I don't think they had paper towels, but you and I, we do live in the modern day and we're gonna use a little paper towel and we're gonna just spread that olive oil all the way around. You can also use vegetable oil if you don't have olive oil. We're gonna spread it all the way around, making sure to get all the surfaces of our cast iron skillet. Be careful, these do get just a little bit slippery. You're not looking for this to be drenched. You really just want a nice thin coat. If there's any excess and it's pulled up anywhere, you can just wipe it right off. And then we're just gonna heat it up right here on the stove. I typically put mine just a little bit below medium. What you want is for the pan to come up to about 350 degrees and stay that way for about five minutes and then you'll be golden. Next, let's make our apple crisp and we're gonna do it right in this very same cast iron. Now that we've cleaned and seasoned our cast iron, we're gonna make an apple pumpkin crisp. The first thing we're gonna do is make the bottom layer for our apple pumpkin crisp. Now we don't have to worry about spraying our pan or anything like that because remember, we've got a nice oil base in our cast iron and so nothing's gonna stick. It is still a little bit warm, so handle it with caution. That will make your brown sugar we're gonna put in this apple pumpkin crisp nice and caramelized. So we're just gonna be glad for that a little bit later. The first thing we'll add is two cans of pumpkin puree. This is not pumpkin pie mix or any, anything added to the pumpkin, just pumpkin puree. Now, um, for those of you who don't know, I live in a farm in Missouri. And we have a program here that's uh, part of the Missouri Department of Agriculture called Missouri Grown. And here at Missouri Grown, we have a lot of different pumpkin farms in the state of Missouri. And they're so fun to take your kids to, and they have hay rides and wagon rides and all kinds of pumpkin things. So uh, if you happen to go with your kids and get a pumpkin, you can ask for what's called a pie pumpkin. Now a pie pumpkin is gonna be 
about, well, it's about the size of this bowl, actually. It's a, it's a smaller pumpkin. You can get a white one or an orange one. And what you'll do is you'll take the top off and carve out the middle, take the seeds out, and you want the meat of the pumpkin without the seeds. And what you can do is you can um, put that in a blender and you'll end up with pumpkin puree. We just skipped that step for today. But if you happen to come to Missouri, to any of the Missouri grown pumpkin farms here in Missouri, you can get a pumpkin and you can do that yourself. All fresh from homemade. So what we'll do is we will, um, next we're gonna add our um, evaporated milk, one can. We're also gonna add a teaspoon of my homemade vanilla. Now, if y'all remember, I made this a couple of months ago and this will be my first time to use this batch. I'm really looking forward to opening it. going to measure this with my heart and my eyes. That's about a teaspoon ish. I am going to close this back up because the longer it sits, the better it is. So we're just going to leave that closed up and I'm going to stir this up until it's nice and mixed together. You can also use a whisk for this step if you'd like. And I, I'll tell you, this, there is just not much that smells better than pumpkin and cream. And next we're gonna add all of our spices. And of course, some butter. Okay, that's mixed up plenty. Next, let's add our eggs. To this, we'll add three eggs. If you're using eggs that you've gotten from your chickens at home, you'll want to test your eggs to make sure. You might even want to crack them first into a separate bowl just to make sure they're good so that you don't ruin your recipe. I'm going to break these eggs up just a little bit and stir them in. Again, you can use a whisk. But this recipe as a whole takes a lot of mixing, so I'm not too worried about it being thoroughly combined. It's going to get mixed. That just looks amazing. If you happen to see any pockets of eggs, you wanna make sure and break those up so that nobody gets a blob of scrambled egg, a blob of scrambled egg in their mouth. Okay, we're getting really close, you guys. The next thing we'll do is add one full cup of white granulated sugar. One quarter cup of brown sugar. This is gonna plop, so hold it down low. We'll add two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Now this is homemade pumpkin pie spice that I get from a neighbor. If you'd like the recipe for homemade pumpkin pie spice or any of our spices, you can go on ozarkfarms.org and look at our blog post and just um, search for it and we'll, it'll come up for you. Just sprinkle that in nicely and also add in a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now we'll stir all this in. Break up your brown sugar just a little bit. And you really want to make sure <clears throat> that your spices are nicely combined. Spices in the right ratio are wonderful and they really add a lot to your recipe. But if, if they're not thoroughly combined and somebody gets too much of one in one bite, it can really throw off their experience for your whole recipe, and we don't want that. I'm gonna scrape the bottom of my bowl and the sides to just make sure that I don't have any dry ingredients 
hanging out around the bottom and the sides. That's feeling really good. Perfect. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few chopped pecans. Now there's a few different ways you can do pecans. Now y'all know if you saw me on the last episode, I told you about my grandparents' pecan farm in the South. I told you, I think, I might've told you this, that I just thought they had big trees. I didn't know they had a pecan farm. But it, picking pecans was such a big deal for us and shelling pecans was a big deal for us. So um, a lot of people will chop pecans. Sometimes I chop pecans. But if I just kind of need to do a little bit of thinking in the kitchen, which I think I've talked to y'all about a little bit, sometimes I'll just do it with my hands. And But I, I think I'm gonna put, you can put really anywhere from a half a cup to a three quarters of a cup of pecans in the recipe. And then I would save another quarter to a third of a cup of chopped pecans to put on top. Everybody does is just a little bit different. Some people like bigger chunks of pecans. I take my pecans and I, I hold them in my hand just like this and I just twist it. And what happens is you end up with four, four little pieces of a pecan half. And to me, that's just about right for a good bite. This almost, this is very therapeutic. Um, for us country people, if you're a country person, you know this. And if you're not, I'm gonna teach you something. So you've probably seen, um, you've probably seen movies or something of people sitting on back porches and swings and on rocking chairs talking and just doing things with their hands. There's something so therapeutic I think about just sitting and being still and doing something with your hands that's productive and talking to each other or listening to each other. For me and my family, sure, I mean, shucking corn, snapping green beans, and taking care of pecans is one of those activities. I think we're just about there. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in apple pie filling. In the fall, in Missouri, uh, we do have a lot of apple farms here. So there's a lot of apple orchards where you can take your kids and go pick apples. And there's different kinds of apples that are in season at different times. Some like warmer weather, some like cooler weather. If you're looking for more information about the different types of apple farms that we have in Missouri, you can go to the Missouri Grown website and you could find more information about that. Um, I like to can apple pie filling. And so if you guys wanna find my apple pie filling recipe that I use to can apple pie filling, you sure can. You can also freeze it if you'd like to. But I like to can apple pie filling. And so I've got some apple pie filling here today. And the one thing I would tell you about making an al any, any apple pie filling, whether it's fresh or canned, is that you want to use a nice crisp apple. I like to use Granny Smith and typically some kind of a pink and yellow apple. Okay, next we're going to <clears throat> add our apple pie filling right into this mixture. Now sometimes if I'm feeling like I have a little extra time or if I'm making this specifically for my kids, I might put this on a plate or a chopping board and cut up my apple slices into really tiny pieces that makes it a little bit easier for the kids to chew. Um, I'm making this for you and I today and I think we can handle the apple slices. That smells delicious. Now we're gonna have our oven preheated to 375. And then once we put this in, we're gonna turn it down to 350. I like to start everything with a little bit of a hot oven. It makes the edges of things a little crispy. We'll blend this together. I think that looks just right. I think we've got all of our ingredients in there. You know how it is when you're distracted as a mom a little bit. Sometimes you gotta think through things twice. So we're gonna put this right into our pie pan. 
or a cast iron skillet, not a pie pan. I use these as a pie pan, so to me, this is a pie pan. I really love this recipe. We serve this recipe every single day at our market, and we serve it with a big old scoop of vanilla ice cream here at Ozark Farms in Missouri. I don't know if I've ever told y'all this, but I, I, um, I started cooking when I was a really little girl with my mom when I could barely see over the edge of the counter. I remember seeing it up on a little stool and where I could just barely see up over the, the top of the counter. Do y'all remember that when you were little? Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the streusel topping and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's very simple. We're gonna shake this down and make it even across the top or what I might do is just smooth it out a little bit. Let's see. The next thing we'll do that we've got everything in here is we're gonna smooth out the top and then we're gonna put our butter on top. I almost forgot one step. So now if you're like me and you like a nice streusel topping, I'm gonna to give you a little secret. Make a butter pecan cake mix, with just the dry part, okay? And then sprinkle it on top. You can also use a butter pecan cookie dough, but just use the dry part. And we're gonna sprinkle it on top. And then I'm gonna show you what to do next. Now you do not wanna mix this in, okay? We're gonna spread it out just a little bit, very gently, all the way to the edge. And I'll tell you something I learned making this because like I said, we have this at, at our, our, our market at Ozark Farms every day. There's nothing like this in the fall with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream or butter pecan ice cream and caramel sauce. But one thing that I learned making this is you don't wanna leave any Leave no stone unturned when it comes to butter. <laughs> so we're gonna put a lot of butter on this. You wanna put a pat just all the way around here in a big old circle, just over and over and over and over and over again. I like to have my butter set out to keep it soft. Just, I, I leave salted butter out to keep it soft. I leave my unsalted butter in the fridge, and I'll tell you why I do that. Because unsalted butter is what you use to make pie crust, and you need that usually cold. Salted butter is what you usually use to cook with and eat, and we typically use that soft. The very first time I made this, or maybe the, not the first time I made it, but the first time I made it for real, where I put all the topping on it and everything, I didn't put enough butter on it and I couldn't figure out why the top part wasn't getting brown. <laughs> That's because I didn't measure enough butter with my heart. I've learned my lesson on the butter. Don't skimp on the butter. See how we have a nice circle and all those little pats of butter are real close together? We're just gonna keep doing that all the way across the top. And what happens is that butter melts and it makes the liquid that turns this dry butter pecan cookie or cake mix that you've made into a streusel. And it is delicious. I love making things where you can start out with all ingredients that you can hold in your own hand. You know, like if you go picking apples with your family at an apple orchard in Missouri, or you go to a pumpkin farm and you pick your pie pumpkins and then you come home with your kids and you, you know, salt and dry out the pumpkin seeds in the oven. Those are, those are the things that make a life to me.
we're nearing the end of the of the butter escapade. Ta-da! Now, what I'll do is I'll go through around. I think that needs a little bit more butter right there, just based on based on my catastrophe that one time that I made this and I put enough butter. So I think that looks perfect. Then the only other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumple up just a few more pecans to put on top. Um, and then I'm gonna save those pecans for about the last 10 minutes of baking. So what we'll do now is we're gonna put this in the oven at, the oven is preheated to 375 degrees. When we put this in the oven, we will turn the oven down to 350. We will bake it and then um, the last 10 minutes of baking, we're gonna put the pecans on top, let them get nice and golden and toasty, and then take it out and enjoy some apple pumpkin crisp. Y'all, I am so excited to share this apple pumpkin crisp with you. We've got these toasted pecans on top and our butter. Look what our butter did. Didn't that turn out so good? More power in the butter. Now, I like a little ice cream on the top of my apple pecan, anything. And so let's just do that together. Here pretty soon, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but I have planned to show you how to make homemade ice cream. So I hope you're here for that. It's a really easy recipe. The kids and I make it all the time and you don't even need an ice cream machine to make it. So I hope you're tuned in for that episode. as easy as pie. You just scoop it right on out onto your plate. So delicious. So yummy. All the apple pie filling goodness. All the pumpkin-y goodness right here in the same dish. Yum, yum, yum. Let's put a little ice cream on top. Doesn't that look nice? Just perfect. If you like the homemade caramel sauce that we made last time and you've got any of that left, you can drizzle that over the top as well. We're also gonna make salted caramel in just a little bit. So I hope you'll stay tuned and come with us next time as we return to home with Michelle Broxton, where we go through all of our great grandma's favorite vintage recipes way back from a hundred years ago. Thank you so much for joining me today on Return to Home with Michelle Broxton. See you soon.